decided that the panels were a little too uh, floppy. So we're gonna put in middle posts to keep them a little bit firmer. We bought enough of those 16 foot kettle panels to get a really good bulk price. opted to zip tie the cut down middle pieces to the other cattle panels. I wanted to point out that Wendy hurt her foot when a bunch of T-posts fell on them. So if it looked like she was struggling, that's what that was all about. Five trellis rows put up, two more to go. It's getting pretty late, so we're gonna call it a day. Beautiful time of day to look at the garden. So it's been a couple of weeks since we put the trellises up. And plants are definitely growing. Yeah. So those are beans that I planted from seed. They're doing really pretty well. These are green beans. Um, I like to grow those as bush. So that's why they're down there, not on a trellis. We've got a whole bunch of cherry tomatoes in here, mostly cherry tomatoes. The cherry tomatoes seem to be doing the best at this point. I have been able to start getting them trellised up and you can see some flowers on some of them. Some cabbages and some other coal crops in here. And then I've in between them put okras. Some of the okras didn't come up very well and then as I was thinning the other ones, I just stuck some of them in the other holes. So some of the okra that looks like it's wilting and dying, that's because I did that. So I think I'm going to have to maybe put some zinnia seeds or something like that in some of these holes. And that's kind of my plan in general is just to put flowers in the holes where things didn't come up. There's a few spots in with the beans and things like that. So I'll probably put zinnias and marigolds and things like that in those spots. Um, maybe some nasturtiums. Just things to keep the pests down as well as make it look prettier. You're making me very anxious. I don't want you walking. Please don't walk. Because you don't... I've seen you step on my stuff before and I don't like it. Okay, just look... I worked very hard face, to face, grow things. Face don't the camera, kill it. <laughs> face the camera when you're speaking so I can hear you. I can't just stare at the camera and not look at what I'm okay, doing. Okay, okay, go ahead. It it's looks fine. very, this is my garden. There's stuff, <laughs> stuff growing over there. This <laughs> just not natural at all. Is that what you want? No, you can do it natural. That's fine. Gosh. <laughs> this is cabbage. There's some 
broccoli. <laughs> That's going to be the thumbnail. Oh, there's a new thumbnail. Brian, you better take that out. <laughs> God, you're obnoxious. You bring out the worst in me. <laughs> um, okay, so I have Napa cabbages, which interestingly, the slugs would just eat to the ground literally the moment I set anything out that had a Napa cabbage tag on it. It was like the slugs would be there on the ground going, Napa, yum, <laughs> my favorite. And would just come munch it right, right down to the ground in Oregon. So I was very impressed that these are looking like they are and getting big. And But some of the other cabbages are still pretty small. But they looked kind of bad when I put them in. So I'm thinking that they'll, they may still pick up. What I'm not thinking is doing very well are the broccolis and cauliflowers. So those, unfortunately, I kind of thought, eh, it's a big gamble to see if I can get broccoli and cauliflower to grow, especially since I planted it late. So I'm fully expecting those to go to, to just shoot up and go to seed and not do very well because it's just really hot already. So it's been in the 80s. But the cabbages still seem to be doing okay, which I'm pleased about. We'll see how they do later on in the season. I think we might get these Napa cabbages in, though. And then I can make some nice stir fries and stuff, so that will be good. Um, but these don't really matter as much because we'll have a fall garden, and so we'll get all this stuff in the fall anyway. So I just wanted to experiment a little to see if there were maybe some things that I could grow. And so that's what we're doing. So just to be clear, all of this is the summer garden. Yes, this is the summer garden. And there's gonna be a whole nother fall garden. Yes, there's gonna be a whole nother fall garden. That's a lot of work. That's, that's what we wanna do. All right. And once we have the gardens established, we'll put chickens in them and we'll put our goat manures in them and let the chickens work them in and it will be a lot less work than it was this first year where we were getting things here. started does take a lot more yeah. work than just maintaining something yep yep so once we get and start maintaining everything i'm hoping that within five years we won't even need these row covers because i know a lot of people are really kind of like no oh, i don't like having any weeds in my garden and things like that I am not one of those people I don't mind that there's grass growing along the edges and things like that I'm actually along these edges have started planting I chopped it all back <laughs> and then I replanted a whole bunch of zinnias and cosmos and different flowers along the edge and I, I think that it will still have tons and tons of grass in it, but it's also maybe going to have some flowers. And so it'll just make a nice little border area. So I did plant okra in between all of these coal crops. And my thinking is, is that these will get tall and will shade the coal crops. And then hopefully I'll be able to get some of these other things, particularly like the cabbage, which won't like the sun baking on it. It will actually kind of mold, bake the leaves and they get nasty and slimy then. So I'm hoping they'll bush out and be very pretty and add some floral type interest because they, they're in the hibiscus family so they look really pretty. And But we'll also cover and shade some of these cabbages in here. And if that works, then yay, I'll do cabbages every year. If it doesn't, then We'll just do the summer stuff that we're supposed to do. <laughs> In here I have summer squash and some of them are getting, the seeds I'm pretty sure are getting eaten, eaten down by birds because I'll see a whole row of birds along the cattle panels in the morning looking like they're very well fed. <laughs> And so I'm thinking that I've already started some seeds just in a container to try and replant some of this stuff. But some of it's come up. And I have a yellow squash there that's gotten actually quite big. So 
we'll see how many squash we get before vine borers and things like that get them. That wasn't a problem we actually had when we lived in Oregon. The problem we always had was that the, the sun didn't get them enough so that they would produce very fast. So I'm hoping to get a whole bunch really fast, eat them, and then not want them again. <laughs> That's the idea. So uh, we have yellow squash patty pans um, and a whole bunch of green squash in here. So we'll see if any varieties do better than others and things like that as well. So I planted quite a large variety of different things. Different varieties of green squash, different varieties of yellow squash, and two varieties of patty pans. So they, we'll see how they do. And I have some beets in here. And this is more or less a giant huge experiment because it's under this plastic and I'm kind of thinking they're not going to do very well, and I really densely sowed them. So, and a lot of spots didn't, they didn't come up at all. So, I'm thinking I'll have to probably go in here and maybe plant some marigolds. But, in the meantime, I'll, I'll need to thin these out some. And so, my thinking is I'll let the leaves get a little bigger. And then I'll harvest some just for the leaves and we'll use those in, you know, an omelet in the morning or something like that. And then the rest will leave in there. I think I could leave like two in each of the holes and I'm kind of hoping that they'll all kind of come up together and then I can just pull this edge of the fabric up and harvest them all at once and mm. then can some of them. But yeah, I was wondering about root things, how you get them out from under the plastic. So. Yeah. We'll probably want to do root things more like we're doing our our um, potato garden. And I also have in here, I've got some different peppers. So I went to town on peppers this year because I'm so excited about being able to do lots of different peppers. I want to do some pepper sauces and ferment some sriracha and have some taco sauce and just some different things like that because the peppers I could never really get to grow very well in Oregon because it would be, you know, the nights would get down in the 40s until almost July. And then it would be 80 degrees at night and 90 degrees in the morning for a few months and then it would stop <laughs> and it was over and the peppers would never be big enough. So I would only get a very small little pepper harvest and only a few fruit for each plant. And it was very dismal. So I'm hoping I get a whole bunch here. So I'm really excited about peppers. Um, and we have more tomatoes. And I've also got a whole bunch of eggplants that I'm pretty excited about. Because I want to experiment with some different um, sauces for um, Indian and Moroccan food and things like that that I could actually have canned in jars. Um, also some Thai food because I've got some Thai varieties and so that's kind of an exciting thing. And then also just making fresh things like baba ganoush and stuff like that which is tasty. So these beans are my dry beans and so I, mean, I have quite a few dry beans in here. A bunch of them didn't come up and I think it's just because I have had some pretty old seeds that I was using in some cases and so I've got some dry beans in here and then I also have some dry pole beans and then there's just a couple up at the top that are the noodle beans, the really long beans. People call them asparagus beans, yard long beans. They got a lot of names so I have a couple varieties of those, a green one and a red one that I'm growing up in the middle there. But otherwise these are dry beans. And then I've also ordered some that I'm gonna put in that empty row here. You're talking about this, this yeah. space here? Yeah. In that space I'm gonna put cow peas, which are a fresh or drying pea variety that is a Southern staple. So we'll have mm -hmm. those. They're just a drying, or you can eat them fresh, but mostly they're a drying pea, like a black-eyed pea or something like that, that will be good for winter eating. 
and it's a southern staple, so I'm excited to be able to grow it because it was never something I could grow back in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Try all so, the things. Yep. Be very, very careful, Brian. See, see how hard it is to see these things, and if you pull it out from way down here, it's going to pull all these plants out. So if you trip, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> So along the edge, I have a whole bunch of different sized melons. So some of them are watermelon sized, but a lot of them are the smaller personal sized melons. So um, I'm really excited about those because those have never, ever even came close to coming up when we were in Oregon. I would get a plant and then we would get literally like a golf ball sized watermelon for a sugar baby <laughs> and that would be it and so it would be very very disappointing it was so sad so I'm really excited to have the heat to grow these things I'm just really worried that bugs are gonna get them so I grew a lot of varieties so that we can see what works and what doesn't and then I also know that squash bugs are going to be a really big problem so I grew a lot that are in that sort of butternut family but I did put in a few others that I just really like like there's a curry squash k-u-r-i that is really good for like Thai and Indian cuisine I really like eating it with that and then I put a couple of different varieties of sugar pie pumpkins and then I've had some trust struggle you see the white tags in here <laughs> every time I plant something in those white tags the birds have been eating them and so I, I am getting some seeds for more in that butternut family again the seminal squashes that are like a pumpkin and so I'm going to try planting some of those and I think I got some of another variety of seeds as well that I'll try and replant in those because obviously these pumpkins are yeah, the bigger pumpkins are not wanting to do what they want, what what I want them to, because the birds keep eating them. So I'll try to replant them probably in pots first and then put them out. Melons and pumpkins are going to spread out, yes. aren't they? So And that's why they're all at this end, because if they spread or if they grow up this trellis with all this stuff, then, you know, this is going to be, other than the beans up there and the tomatoes up there that I'll have to keep them off of, which is why those are all up at the top, then I can direct everything to kind of grow towards over here, especially this area where, you know, it, it's up for debate whether I'll manage to get in here and get some other things planted that will grow up this trellis and things like that, because this area right here is completely barren now. I think they'll they'll probably just go somewhat that way if they go anywhere and I'll just move the fence over. All right, so you're, are you, you're envisioning maybe some of the yard being taken over by the garden? Yeah, so for next year what I want to do is cover this whole area here up towards where that little shrubby tree is, the cedar and have it extend out there and just have this be more of like where we grow our corn and stuff like that. And I've been doing some research on corn and I think what we need to do is just find varieties that have a far enough from each other germination, what's the word? Date where they would be putting up their, their heads for germination not germination that's not the right way to say it i'm saying it wrong brian <laughs> so i want them to have different days where they pollinate and so if they're so different pollinators yeah no i want be careful where you're stepping um i want them to pollinate a couple weeks away from each other so that they do not cross pollinate that way you can keep your strains straight. Exactly, because with corn, it will actually cause the kernels of the corn to be different things. And so if you've got a sweet corn and a popcorn, 
you don't want to have popcorn kernels in your sweet corn. That would just be gross. So, because I want to grow popcorn and sweet corn and dent corn. Because we do have a dent corn sheller and also a um, little flour mill. So I could make cornmeal and things like that if we had some dent corn, which I'd be very excited about having our own dent corn. And obviously, I also could pop our own popcorn, so that would be super fun. Yeah, it'll be fun to have different ways to preserve things and mm -hmm. use them. Yep, yep. One of the big reasons why I'm really wanting these in-ground beds to work is that the problem I had with raised beds was that they were very, very hard to irrigate. Um, the irrigation was very complicated and when I put it in, it was always leaking and it was, you know, buried under the ground and in the bed and just a big pain in the butt. And then you had all these tubes to pull out and things like that. And I wanted it to be one thing that I could rip up every year and not have to do any more than that. So what we've done is we have one main line that hooks directly to a hose that is on a timer at the house that runs all along here and I left a whole huge extra line that will run along this new area that I want to have it up there for next year. It runs all along the top here and then what we have down here are just little quarter inch soaker hoses that run off of it. They come down each bed or each line of the garden. So for example, if say I decide to do the, the beds all differently, I can put little plugs in those holes and run different lines if I need to. And it's really easy to just swap it out. It might leak a little, but I'm not so worried about getting a little extra water at the very top of the garden. It's just gonna run down. Somebody may have noticed we do have a stand up sprinkler down there kind of in the middle. So that's just a transition. Yeah, yeah, that's not going to stay there because it doesn't, it, it's not a good way at all to water a garden of this size. It doesn't reach and also it's very wasteful of our precious well water. I wanted something very um, conservative of that precious resource for us. So we don't need to overwater things. We've got a hose coming from the house. But we didn't want the hose to just run right over the driveway where deliveries and people are driving all the time. So we ran a hose all the way from the house down over kind of near the pond there. And then through this culvert, through this culvert underneath the driveway and then out over to the garden. It's a system that, that works. It's not ideal. Perhaps in the future when we have a beautiful garden with permanent fences and all that kind of stuff, we'll have an actual yard hydrant out there to work with. <laughs> What's that? I said some future YouTube person is already going, oh my god, he talked for five minutes about his hose. What a weirdo. <laughs> uh, everybody just wants to see the plants, Brian. <laughs> I think a structural workaround that makes our garden function is interesting. Besides, fishing that hose through that long culvert was not an easy thing to do. Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip around the moon with us.